Hey, thanks for joining me today on Just Cook with Michael. Today, after watching this video, you will know how to make the famous pastry dish from Lisbon, Portugal, called a stege de nata. This is a famous pastry that you see throughout Portugal. A stege de belém. A stege is pastry, nata is cream. A stege de belém is referring to a specific restaurant and area in Lisbon. Over 300 years ago, the monks used to use egg whites to starch their cloves. And so they had all these egg yolks left over. What do we do with them? Well, you make a custard with them. And that's basically what this is. It's a custard somewhat similar to like a creme brulee, except this has a thickener in it usually, like uh, either cornstarch or flour. There's a famous place in Lisbon that the monks sold the recipe to. They sold this recipe in 1837. That bakery is known as the Fabrica de Pastel de Belém. One of those places you go to, there's a line out the door. If you go there during the wrong time, you could be waiting hours to get in to be seated. I did have the privilege of eating there about three years ago, and I would say it's worth the hype. It was just so delicious. So I'm gonna break this recipe into two parts. The first part, I'm gonna make the dough that's going to line the little tart pans for the custard. And basically, this is making a type of laminated dough. In the United States, it's a puff pastry dough. We're getting butter and folding and folding, rolling it out, fold, fold, roll it out, fold, fold. So after what you have is many layers of flour, butter, flour, butter, flour, butter, flour, butter. And what that does, when you put it in a hot oven, those layers separate from each other and the steam that's in the butter causes each layer to separate and expand a little bit. So it gives it just a rich taste because of butter and a very flaky taste because of all those laminated layers. Probably best to divide this in two days. The first day, just make your dough and then put it in your refrigerator overnight. If you're doing this all in one day, the dough needs to rest a few hours after you made it before you use it to cook with. One of the first steps you wanna do when making this recipe is trying to keep your butter at a relatively cool but not hot temperature. So it should be spreadable but still rather firm for the best results. You definitely don't want it being anywhere near frozen or straight out of the refrigerator. You don't want it to be so soft that it's actually, you know, almost melting. So I'll put my flour in here first. I'm using, you know, a KitchenAid mixer for this, but you can do this by hand. Probably only need to do it for about a minute. Looks pretty good. It's uh, just a slightly tacky. Put a little flour on our rolling surface. So you can see this is a little tacky. See how it's just sticking to my hand there? So that, that's okay, because that's what we're, we're gonna use the floured surface. Both sides get flour on your dough so it doesn't stick. And you wanna roll it out to about a seven by seven inch square. Try to shape that more into a square or rectangle shape. Okay, now we're gonna let the dough rest for about 15 minutes. This is an important step just because you wanna let the dough hydrate. You wanna give time for the water to get into each of those grains of flour and just make one consistent smooth product. Because or else, if you don't give it this rest period, you could possibly like tear it more easily when you're rolling it out. And this dough gets rolled out fairly thin. You try to make sure no air gets to it because you don't want to get dry spots. Now we're going to roll it out into about a 16 by 16 inch square. So you can make sure it's not too tacky. Flour out if you need to. You could feel your dough every once in a while to feel if it's getting sticky, like right here in this section, I could feel it a little sticky, and I think it's sticking to the countertop just a bit. A little flour there. See, so it's sticking just a little bit there. If it starts to stick, you could use a bench scraper to try to peel it up. So I'll need a little more flour. I have my butter on two separate plates. The main reason for that is that way, when I'm working on one, if the other one's starting to warm up too much, you could put it back in the refrigerator for just a couple minutes and vice versa and take it out. Say so that's about two thirds of the dough, I wanna put the butter. And you wanna use about a third of your total butter. Just spread these out. You wanna stay at least an inch away from the border. Okay, that looks fairly even. I'll just spread it down a little bit. Careful, you do not want to break your dough or rip it. Ideally, the butter is about the same pliability as the dough. That way, when you're rolling it out, they both need us about the same amount of force when rolling it. All right, now we want to take this one third of the dough that doesn't have any butter on it and fold it into the middle third. Pull it over easily. So you want that to then pull this last third that has the butter back over. Try to get it even. And now we're gonna turn it 90 degrees. So 
that long, put this long side to you. Same thing about a third rover, third rover. Nobody could see there's, there's multiple layers there. And the more we fold this, it just gets exponential flour, butter, flour, butter, flour, butter. Generous amount of flour. And now we're gonna roll it out to that same 16 by 16 inch shape. And this is so thin, you, know, you can see the shadow of the butter through this dough. That's how thin each layer is. You can feel it sticking just a little bit. You don't want to try to roll it out all at once to 16 by 16 because then if it's stuck to the bottom it really can be hard to pull up so kind of play with it with it every once in a while and just be cognizant if the dough is starting to stick to your countertop okay now we'll do that same process again two-thirds of the dough you're going to put another one-third of butter don't go to the very edge leave about an inch space there and see how this butter now is fairly pliable kind of what you're hoping to achieve okay there you go then again fold over one-third onto the middle third and the last third stretch over. Now you want to turn it to 90 degrees and fold again. And you want to take your time, not too much pressure all at once. Now we're trying to get it to a 16 by 16 square again. So I'm getting off a perfect square. So I'm going to trim off some of this excess on this side just to try to straighten it up. And you can layer this just right in the middle of your dough because you're gonna fold that in anyway. Brush away some of that excess flour before you put the butter on. All right, now we're on our third time putting butter on our dough and folding. So again, stay about an inch away from the edge, leaving a whole inch border. Like here, you wanna stay away from the, from the last inch of the dough and up here also. And then with your knife or your spatula, just try to smooth out that butter a little bit. You don't ever want to press too hard because you don't want to rip your dough. I'll fold this one third over, fold the other third back over itself. There you go. Back to a nice square shape. Go ahead and flour your surface again. And now you're rolling it out to the final 16 by 16 shape. Try to, especially for this last rolling, try to get it as square as possible. And what we're going to do now is roll it as tightly as you can. So just start rolling it over itself. If it's sticking at all with your bank scraper, just go underneath it to help it along. Mine isn't too bad. And then seam side down, so there's some pressure on that bottom seam, put that down and cover it with the syringe. You let it rest for at least two hours. Now, if you don't have time to make your own dough, there's another way you could go about this. So if you just wanna make the custard and skip the dough making process, either because you don't have enough time or you just wanna try out this method first, what you do is you get some puff pastry from your grocery store. So this puff pastry I took out of the freezer last night. So it is pliable. You can see it has a good, you know, it's foldable very easily. So what you wanna do, this already has all those layers, everything's done. So you basically roll it in that same log shape. And usually one, box of puff pastry comes with about two of these. This puff pastry, it's wanting to unroll, so I'm gonna put just a little thin film layer of water there. This kind of almost works like as a little bit of a glue. You could do this to the homemade dough also. If it wants to unroll, you can put seam side down. Okay, our dough has been resting for, I let it rest overnight, but you wanna let it rest for at least two hours. If you let it rest overnight, you probably wanna take it out of your refrigerator about an hour before you wanna use it so it's more pliable because you have to be able to like squeeze it up the sides of your tent. Today, I'm gonna make the custard. It's gonna take some flour, sugar, a little bit of cinnamon, some water, some vanilla. It's good to have everything organized before you get started, have everything measured out like I have here. Very good if you have a thermometer. Almost all custards, whether it's pastiche de natta or creme brulee or flan, you want to cook to 170 degrees internal temperature. That is the temperature that eggs actually set. This is the best investment you can make. Get a good digital thermometer or at least a thermometer. These are great because they're so easy to read and precise. Cook it till 170, that's it, and you're done. Traditionally, pastillas de nata are cooked in an extremely hot oven. Over, you know, I've read like 700 to 800 degrees. So traditionally, that the, the pastillas de nata have that uh, almost like burnt spots on top. Towards the end, if I could tell my custard set, I will turn on the broiler so the heat's coming just from the top down and try to get some of that nice color on there if I'm not getting that yet. One more thing is it's good to have your equipment ready too. Have that organized. We're gonna need one pan for scalding the milk, one pan for the water and sugar we're gonna melt down with the cinnamon, and one pan for the flour and a little bit of milk we're gonna stir up. And, and the reason we stir up that flour and milk is if you dumped hot liquid like scalding milk or sugar syrup into flour, it would just clump up 
and be unusable. So in the same way you need to make a slurry when thickening something with cornstarch, we're making a slurry, but this time with f actual flour. Here we go, let's do it. Okay, the first thing we'll do is put your flour in your stainless steel bowl or any type of bowl and about a quarter cup of milk. You can't find half and half. You could use just milk or you can mix in half of the volume of milk and heavy cream together and that'll get you to the half and half stage. Then set that aside. Right now, we need to separate the egg whites from the egg yolks. Okay, now we're gonna heat up our water sugar mixture. So in this pan, we're gonna put the water. Now we'll add in the sugar. Now I'm gonna put in the cinnamon and we're gonna heat up this sugar until it gets to about 115 degrees Fahrenheit. Now with the rest of the half and half, I'm going to scald it. So bring it up to about 180 to 190 degrees. It's a good idea to preheat your oven. That is ready to go. It's at 217, so I'll set that aside. Yep, 199, so just below boiling, turn that off. Now I'm gonna stir in the vanilla. Okay, we have our scalding hot milk. Now we're slowly going to whisk that in to our flour milk mixture, our slurry. Put a little bit in in the beginning, maybe like a quarter cup of the scalding milk and incorporate that well. Just again, you want to make sure there's absolutely no clumps. Okay, now we have our sugar mixture. Okay, I made sure the sugar mixture is still really hot. I put it on the flame for just a little bit. You can see it's at 217 degrees Fahrenheit. So I will mix that in and you want to be stirring the entire time. Our egg yolks are not in here yet. This mixture right now is too hot to add in egg yolks. You would curdle them right away if you put the egg yolks in at this point. At 170 degrees, 175 degrees Fahrenheit, you would cook your eggs immediately by putting it in here. So you want to let this mixture now, before you put in your egg yolks, either you know set it aside for about 10 minutes or wait till it drops below 150 degrees Fahrenheit before putting in your egg yolks. And when you do put in your egg yolks, make sure you stir them constantly while adding them in. So as you're adding these in one at a time, just stir them right into the mix. You can also make this custard a day in advance. I would probably pull it out of the refrigerator at least an hour before you want to use it to let it come up to room temperature. But if you're going to use it like I'm going to use it now within an hour after I line my pastry tins, then after you just can leave it out. And just to give you an idea about the consistency, it's got some thickness to it. You know, it's thicker than milk or water. Now I'm going to line the tins with the pastry dough. Now traditionally, the tins are probably, I won't say quite half, but probably at least a third smaller than a standard muffin tin. And these are gonna be cut in about one inch pieces. So I would do a test first. So get one of these, put it in your muffin tin. So you want it to be workable and you want it to be about a sixteenth of an inch thick. Don't be tempted to make it thicker because what happens with this type of puff pastry, whether you're making it or buying your own puff pastry directly from the store, is that it'll want to do what it's called. It'll want to puff up. And so even though you're spreading it out to a sixteenth of an inch, it's probably at least going to want to almost double in that thickness. Once those laminated layers puff out, you're going to have a thicker crust when it happens. So this is the part where, you know, you just have to take your time. I almost go to the top of the muffin pan. There. Again, wetting my thumbs. And you just kind of want to push that dough sort of up the sides a little bit. Now this is the puff pastry, the store-bought puff pastry. As you can see, it made a thinner log. This was only one sheet, though. The store puff pastry comes with two sheets. So this one's a little thinner, so I think I need to go for sure a full inch. And if you do poke a hole down through the bottom of it, you can always either with an end piece or any scrap you have, just kind of form that into like a little patch, patch it up. With tins, you shouldn't need to butter them or grease them before. And the main reason is because this dough has so much butter in it to begin with that it doesn't usually stick to things. And now we'll fill up each custard dish up 80% full. And my oven is already at 520 as soon as these are filled up. So this one's full before I even fill up my other one. This will go right away in the oven. Cook it until it's 170 degrees. Towards the end, if I don't have those nice little dark spots on top, I'll move it to the broiler section. Set a timer for 13 minutes. Okay, it's been 13 minutes. I'm gonna check the temperature. Pull this out a bit. So that is plenty hot. I will turn on my broiler just for 
a few minutes just to brown the top of them. Be extremely careful. You want to be checking them probably every 30 seconds to a minute and they could burn pretty easily. Okay, it's been broiling for about three, maybe four minutes. Now my bottom ones, I'll move to the top so they get under the broiler. Now you can make this Portuguese famous dessert. Now these are fairly big because I used a standard muffin tin. You know, if you have a mini muffin tin, that's probably best. Thanks for joining me. Catch me next time. Hit the like button and subscribe if you want to see more of these. Now go cook for someone you love.